quite a di- direct question. Um, one would probably make you think a little bit. What's the, what's the most single piece of important advice you've received from someone throughout your career and, and how have you used that to, to help you in, in so much you've achieved, which has been incredible? Well, in writing, the best advice I ever had was from a um, chief sub on the Dead Express when I was in Police Street who would call me into his room and say, have a look at this. And I'd written the best introduction that anybody had ever written. And he'd take out the first three paragraphs I had. And he said, that's vanity, it starts there. That's a great thing to learn. You do tend to show off a bit, and you shouldn't. You should just... The other advice was Ernest Hemingway from his wonderful book about bullfighting, summing up at the end, uh, Death in the Afternoon, the book was mm. called. And he said, the trick with journalism is to write when you know, mm. never before, and not too damn much after. I think that's very good advice too. And the only other thing I could add to all that in a 60 years of, of journalism is listen. Listen. That's what you've been paid to do, listen. Don't invent it, listen. And obviously, Sir Michael, you've done so much in your career. It's quite a varied path to, mm. to where you got to and to the peaks which you reached, which were quite incredible. Um, would you say to any person looking to follow in your footsteps, it's not about more or less planning and saying, I, I want to get to you know, an interview level at the top. It, it's more about just take, letting kind of nature take its course and where the path takes you more than... I think so. I, mean, I think it's more difficult for young people today than for me. I mean, I could walk into a job in, from school at 16. I walked into the newspaper office and got a job you know, as, a, as an apprentice. Uh, I walked into the garden. I walked into Fleet Street. And if I didn't like a paper in Fleet Street, then I could walk away and go to another paper. I mean, young people can't do that today. Uh, they don't have that kind of freedom of choice that I had, so I was very lucky. I find it difficult to actually equate my career to any young person there because the industry is so different as well. The technology is different. When I first covered a war, you know, you mm. shot on film 60mm, you wrapped it into a tin, you had to go to the airport, hope to God you found a pilot that would take it to London, mm. then film the office. Well, now you just go out there and put your phone up like a satellite you're in the studio. It's totally, utterly different. Mm. The one thing that does remain the same is that if you really truly like the job you're doing and you soon find that out, uh, you really want to do it, then just keep on doing it and keep on just following your nose. You know, the, and in the end, if you work hard, the one thing I've learned in all the years I've been interviewing people, very successful people, is that the very successful ones had one thing in common, they worked harder than the other person. And that's a really good lesson to learn. And so Michael, just a couple of final points. Um, when you're researching your interviews, about to conduct an interview with you know, one of the most famous figures in the world, what kind of preparation, preparation did you do? Was it very thorough, very as thorough so. as it could be? You, you, have to, you have to do more than you would ever need. You need to go into the interview knowing more about that person than he or she knows about themselves. Uh, and you might only use 20% of the interview. But, but again, you, you have to do the, have the rest there because nothing is worse. I know this from being interviewed myself. When somebody asks me a stupid question, you see in the case they've not worked with it, not thought about it. The other advice too, for anybody doing a, a television interview particularly, uh, and even a newspaper, but television particularly, is to think in terms of writing a story. Give it a beginning, give it the middle, give it an end, give it shape. Don't go all over the place. Have the shape in your mind when you're going there. And then listen. And sometimes, of course, you get taken away by someone says something interesting, listen and go that way. But you've got to have that basic shape in your head in case everything doesn't go right. So when you were doing the interview you almost had the story written out how you wanted to do it. I had chapters, I had it. One, two, three, four. That's how I used to think about it. I try to go down there. But again, as I said, sometimes, more often not in fact, I suppose, they would go into a different area. Because the one thing about an interview on television, so I used to do, is that you can plan as much as you like, but what you're aiming for is a situation where the interview becomes a conversation. And that's a different thing.